Welcome to this week's Torah lesson. This week's Torah portion is Parshas by Midbar. The question of the week is, how can we become a Torah scholar? So this week's Torah portion, Parshas by Midbar, which we always read before the holiday of Shavuot, actually begins and says, by Midbar Sinai which is a reference to a, the place where we receive the Torah, in the Sinai Desert. So the Rebbe asks a question. We know the desert is a place, no one lives there, nothing grows there. So why is the Torah associated with a desert? We're a place where nothing grows, there's no life. A step further, this, the, 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 the desert where the Jewish people receive the Torah is called Bar Midbar Sinai. The Talmud says, one of the reasons why it's called Bar Midbar Sinai, now Sinai is with a Samach, but Sinai could also be spelled with a sin, which is referring to Sina, hatred. That because the nations of the world didn't accept the Torah, so there was there, there came from Bar Midbar Sinai a Sina, a hatred to the world for not accepting to the Torah. So I would ask again, why are we associating hatred with the place that the Torah was received? So the Rebbe explains something very powerful and he says as follows. What does Bar Midbar mean? Bar Midbar means a desert. We're going to receive the Torah. The Torah is trying to inspire us and teach us that if we want to be connected to the Torah, we want to learn Torah, we want to have the relationship with Hashem, we have to, when we're learning, create a desert experience. What's a desert experience? Nothing exists. Nothing. Nothing other than the fact that we're sitting and connecting with Hashem. And when we ex create that experience, we'll be able to connect to Hashem and have a beautiful, deep, and meaningful relationship with Hashem through learning Torah. Sinai means hatred. Then, what does hatred represent? It doesn't mean hatred in terms of God from being angry, but a hatred to the world, to be disconnected. When you're learning Torah, the world shouldn't exist. Nothing should be in your way. Nothing should be on your mind. You should be totally connected to Hashem. And Rebbe says we find this also. We know that the Bible of mysticism is the Tanya, the book of the Alter Rebbe. Now, the Alter Rebbe's book of Tanya speaks about our love for Hashem, our awe for Hashem, the Sfirot, very, very powerful, deep, Kabbalistic ideas. But nevertheless, what's the book called? Tanya? What does Tanya mean? To learn. Like, why such a simple name? And Rebbe says again, because the author was trying to teach us that the first phase of entering this deepest Kabbalistic teachings of love and all for Hashem and the Svirot and all the mystical ideas, Tanya. You have to be able to sit down and just learn. Learn means just sit and be with the book gain the knowledge, connect to the knowledge, and then you will automatically um, reach the highest level. So the answer to the question, how can you become a Torah scholar? By Midbar. When you're learning, nothing else should exist. Tanya, when you're learning, you should just be learning. And if you just learn, just be, you will become the greatest Torah scholar. This week's Torah lesson is dedicated to the memory of Baruch ben Arye Leib, Shlom ben Yosef, and Rachel Baslipa. May the souls be elevated by the Torah we're studying in their memory. Thanks so much for joining us for our weekly Torah lesson. Have a great and blessed week. Shavua Tov.